All right, so since our last uh, market outlook video, the market's had a couple of really good days. Today, a really important kind of follow through day that has triggered some really bullish signals or, or not bullish signals. Not We don't have necessarily the trend changing signals yet, but it has triggered some, triggered some bullish signals that are very good signs uh, for the market going forward. So I'm going to break down just how bullish they are. Um, whether or not we can kind of really start to lean in towards some positive deltas, uh, at least uh, having more of them. You obviously should have some in your portfolio, but having more of them as we as we start to, uh, you know, what is our expectation as to how far, how long this rally will last? I'm going to break that down based on the, taking a look at all these indicators, and then we're going to take a look at what's driving today's price action. Um, what kind of move was this today? How much of a risk appetite move was it? And does that tell us anything about the likelihood that we'll stay up here? Or, or are we going to follow the same pattern that we've seen on some of these other rallies that have been pretty similar to this one over the past so many months? Um, so then our, our trade idea is going to be in a stock uh, that's been in the news, that sector has been in the news. It's kind of starting its rally. But it's also meeting up with some of the same resistance a lot of the market is. So we're going to talk about what kind of trade would be more suitable uh, in this environment on that stock. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, July the 20th, 2022. This is the market outlook from marketscholars.com. My name is David Settle. Before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that thumbs up icon down below. Comment on the video. Join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out up there. Click on that link. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. If you're watching us here on our blog, in addition to everything over here on the right, uh, come down here, click on this heart. It opens up this tab. Uh, hit that like button there that pops up. Same thing here. Click that thumbs up icon. Opens up another new tab. Uh, hit that like button there as well. That helps us get our content out uh, to more of our followers on those uh, social media platforms. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the market forecast indicator. So today is the first we followed up uh, yesterday's gain with another good rally today. Still got light green shading and yellow lines, which means the moving average hasn't turned up yet. Um, also means that uh, we're not up above 50, um, much less than to bullish territory on the intermediate line. Though it is rising, so that's why it's green. Uh, this is light green, it's not dark green yet, and we don't have the green line. In fact, we haven't had dark green and green lines since that March, that late March rally there. Needless to say, though, the, the uh, intermediate line is rising. In fact, all four lines are rising right now. The near-term line, momentum line, intermediate line, and long-term market sentiment down there at the bottom. And we closed above 2.5% uh, for the first time. Uh, this would be a great If we can hold this uh, tomorrow, this would be a very, very good move. You can see uh, where you know this 4,000 area uh, up to 4,200. Uh, I think if, you, if we're going to follow through with a really strong move, uh, we can get through 4,000, then we can probably get through these 38% retracement levels and get up closer to 4,200, which is where you know, you've got this 23% retracement from the post-COVID low point. You've got that 62% retracement of this sort of intermediate run that we're on, and you've got this 38% retracement just below of this long-term market sentiment. That's probably where your next real significant layer of resistance uh, is going to be. Uh, near term line getting above 90. This is the what fourth time that that's happened uh, on this current decline that we've been on, uh, this current intermediate decline, close to the fifth time. We got up to 89th percentile right there. So it's you know it's not like we haven't had good moves uh, in the short term to the upside. We've we haven't been able to sustain them because every time we get them, we follow up with a decline. In this case, we followed up immediately with a cluster. Uh, in this case, it took about another couple of weeks, but we got, eventually got down to a cluster uh, with uh, the near-term line and, and momentum line dropping to extreme lows. I think that was our washout move. And then these other times, too, your near-term line got down into bearish territory immediately. So, so what we need to avoid is that situation here, the near-term line dropping back down to bearish territory immediately. Even if it were just a drop down to maybe... You know, just inside or, not, or oversold levels, just inside of bearish territory here, like maybe into the 30s, that would be a lot more ideal. Uh, of course, it'd be you know, if we're going to really start an intermediate run, then you know, we want to be seven to 12 days is how long that near-term line should be uh, in this bullish rally. 
But this is the key thing too, getting above two and a half percent and staying above two and a half percent. Like right now, it doesn't you know? So you can see how easy it would be to get back below two and a half percent if we were to get a decline. So tomorrow, having a good uh, day tomorrow to really solidify this this kind of breakout that we had today. Uh, this breakout you can see uh, across multiple indicators, including the Arun indicator. Right, we got to a hundred finally here. So, so to really hold that breakout, um, that would be the most ideal. If we were to get back down. You know, below 3,800 uh, tomorrow or 3,875 or whatever, um, that would not be the best uh, scenario. So that's unlikely uh, considering the bullish momentum, but it's something to keep an eye on considering past precedent um, every time we've rallied previously, uh, every time we've had these strong near-term rallies here. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100, and you can see its intermediate line is above 50, so we have dark green shading. Um, we are up to the 23% retracement level of this market sentiment decline. Um, and you can see we're well above the 23% of the current intermediate decline, working our way up to this kind of 12,500 area level of resistance uh, for the NASDAQ. Remember, the NASDAQ is still below 13,000, which is where these two lines, remember the S&P is above those lines. The NASDAQ and the Russell, for that matter, are both below those two lines, right? The Russell is at a resistance level now. I mean, that, this is a great move, but this 38% retracement sitting right on top of that 23 on um, both these different declines, different time frames of declines. Um, and you have multiple sitting on top of each other. You know, it's not like we haven't been up to four and a half percent before. Um, you know, we, we got up four and a half percent, but we got to 4.49 there, we're at 4.51. So, you know, again, we need to see so over here, we got up to a uh, really good level, 5.5.1, uh, and we weren't able to hold that. We got the, in fact, we got an overbought cluster, which is kind of rare uh, on this level. So, you know, we need to really follow through and break that resistance if we're going to maintain uh, the bullishness here. Let's take a look at some of these uh, other oscillators. Let's go to the long-term chart first. Um, this is a good sign. We have all three things here, rising PPO, positive differential, so a positive candle, even though it's got a little bit of a lower shadow, and a green arrow, which means we're above. Now we got two days left uh, in this week, um, but if we can hold that green arrow and stay above the 10 week exponential moving average, which is likely 50 day, then that would be very, very good uh, for the for the S&P. Uh, you can see that we got that same pattern you know, across the board. Uh, we have the rising PPO, the green arrow, uh, more of a bullish candle closing above last week's high on the NASDAQ. And then your Russell 2000, rising PPO, bullish candle closing above last week's high and a green arrow there. So we have all three things that we need to signal uh, more of a turnaround. Again, remember, we got those over here, too, in March. So that, that's in and of itself not a, OK, here we go, back up to new highs. Um, but at least it, it, it does give us some bullishness here in the next little bit. Uh, we talked about this, I tweeted about this, about this kind of inflection point for the S&P with this negative index here, right essentially at 25 and the positive also at 25. Well, today the positive rallied a little bit more, uh, got a little bit above 25, which is great. Not quite above 30 where it's breakout move, but at least it's above 25 and the negative did get below 25. It's gotta get below 20 for us to get a good bullish breakout move. But at least, you know, we have the inklings, the beginnings of bullishness there. Uh, that's a good sign. The RSI is above 50. That's a good sign. But it's not above 60, which is where you need it to be, um, combined with the CCI being above at least 150. Um, you know, again, over here, we were above 150. We we're not above 60 on that rally. Over here, we were above 60, but we weren't above 150 on this rally. So, and over here, we weren't above either one of them uh, on that rally. So... So, you know, you like to see both if we're going to really be bullish. And right now we don't have both. So we, do, we need to kind of keep an eye on that, too. Uh, but again, being above 50 is a good sign. And here you're really close to 60 on the NASDAQ 100. And then on the Russell 2000, you're just a smidgen above 60. Now, we've got a smidgen above 60 over there. But here you're a smidgen above 60. You're at 200, which we got over here, too. But again, we're also at resistance. So, you know, very, very important level right now for the Russell uh, to continue to follow through on this and really break out. Um, I also brought up this uh, stochastic indicator. 
Um, it's a great move up into the overbought levels on the stochastics. It's not like this the first time uh, on the S&P. The 20-day uh, average, though, is still kind of flirting with getting in the upper half of the chart is not into bullish levels yet. So that's something to keep an eye on as we uh, see we didn't get above 50 over here on that rally. We did get above 50 on the orange, got all the way above 80 over there. But you can see how the green, the blue line fell back down below the average uh, pretty quickly. So, you know, again, we've seen this before. We need to hold this and get this orange long enough to get that orange line up above uh, 60 there. I also showed you uh, the whole moving average. Great bullish candles closed above yesterday's high. Uh, we're going to get a pretty decent uh, bullish candle tomorrow too. Uh, we are we are above the 200 day hull that uh, 200 day hull by the most. Uh, should we're in the 92nd percentile for the past year, which includes some bullishness here. So that's a really really. I mean we are pretty decently up above. Um, we are pretty decently up above the 200 day. Now, we're only in the 63rd percentile when you include uh, this coming off this COVID low point. So, you know, if you were to, you know, again, kind of keep it to, you know, this, let's say we'll keep it to uh, like October the 1st of 2020 going forward uh, from there. This is kind of give you an idea uh, of how bullish we are. You know, again, we're in the 92nd percentile there too. So, Needless to say, this is a good amount uh, of bullishness, a strong move. We, you know, we've, we were here before, we got up here over here, um, but we're just here, we were extended, we had a green, long, bullish 20-day uh, run um, on the green line, this green line being the 20-day hull. Here, it looks like we're just starting one. The, the parabolic stars just started. Uh, they had flipped to the upside, they flipped back down. So, you know, we have the possibilities of a new bullish run starting. Uh, same thing with the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, the most it's been above its 200-day hull uh, for the, that whole time frame, right? So the, whole, the NASDAQ's really bullish uh, from that perspective. And then the Russell 2000 uh, is in the 76th percentile. It was really bullish over here and going into this March. So if I were to come out, say, uh, March the 10th of 2021, take away that parabolic move that it had. Um, you know, we're in the 89th, so we're close to the 90th percentile, similar to what we saw uh, in November of last year, prior to that hollow, uh, Thanksgiving uh, decline that we had that started things. So needless to say, we're pretty bullish. Like if I were just to go to last year, um, we're pretty bullish. So we're in the 89th percentile. Um, you know, that's a good amount. And again, we just turned green. The parabolic stars are down. We have a good bullish candle closing above a lot of highs. Very, very good developments uh, from that perspective. From the Ichimoku cloud, still no trend yet. Uh, and we are above the blue line easily, above the green line easily. The red line looks as crossing above price, which means we're about to be um, you know, to where we're higher in price today than we were 26 days ago. We'd have to really drop uh, this to keep it down. Um, but you can kind of see, even if we are above this low for a while, if we do drop back down, um, you know, we can get back down below the price pretty easy. So, especially if you were to stay below the cloud, the cloud, it's a great rally, but we're still below the cloud, right? We're still below the cloud on the queues, uh, which is actually a little bit of a thicker cloud. And even though we're, and we're just almost starting a trend there. And then on IWM, again, no trend and we're still below the cloud. So, now again, you can see the resistance levels across a lot of these indicators. Uh, looking at the, the TTM, uh, which is the Keltner Channels and Bollinger Bands, uh, we got the red dot, so we have positive momentum. We did get above the Bollinger Band on IWM, uh, though we are still below the Keltner Channel, which is sitting also at those Fibonacci lines. So another layer of resistance. But a rising bandwidth suggests that you know if we can follow through and break that, great. That would be really, really bullish. Uh, same thing with the Qs. We did get above 100. The bandwidth is rising, but we're still inside of the Keltner channel, and the bands are still inside the Keltner channel. Uh, and then the S&P did not get above the Bollinger Band, and its bands are inside. So you can see that we're not really kind of breaking out here. I mean, it's it's good. We're in the upper quartile, um, but we have some resistance uh, with multiple um, Fibonacci lines and, res and volume resistance levels where we're at. So 
one day, like it's actually been a couple of days, but today has really been the biggest breakout day and it hasn't really accompanied a lot of um, uh, breadth. You notice, you know, we're not getting above positive 100. We never did get below minus 100, but we're not getting above positive 100. And we actually did that over here. And we're definitely not, you know, getting enough breadth to get above zero, which is kind of what you need to really signal that we are done with the decline and getting above positive 500 uh, is like, okay, now we're moving up to new highs, right? So we're not even to zero yet, uh, much less even a little bit above zero. And I, I showed this too on this other, uh, I tweeted this out as well, uh, the new highs and new lows index. And you can see um, that it's, it's not above 100 yet, right? It's got to get, um, it's, no, it's, gotta, it's not even above zero. It's got to get above zero and it's got to get above 100. See, that March peak, as bullish as that was, it didn't even get us above 100, positive 100. So uh, and this last peak here going into the beginning of the year also was under 100. So, you know, we're not getting new highs, uh, enough new highs to really say, you know, we're not going to like you can see in other times when we've really been bullish. It's not like it really gets going to the upside. It's not going to spike to the upside, but it's really got to get going uh, to really suggest that we're you now holding this. It's, we're not just going to retest these lows, right? Um, it's got to get above that level. It's, it's not going to be easy, but it can get there. Um, and, and this actually suggests that we're probably pretty close. Like we're below the 50% mark here. Uh, now the, the average is still barely below one. Um, and you can see in other periods, it gets down at the end of corrections. Um, here, let me zoom in. You can see like the COVID, the average after the fact, got down below 60%, uh, below 80% here coming off that 2018. Uh, and then uh, the 16, we got to 80. Uh, we're at in 2011, we got down below, uh, got to 60. And that correction in early 2008, that led to the bear market. Uh, it got down to about right around below 65. We're still just barely dropping below one. So we're not really like, you know, changing things here. Like we're, we're, we're getting, it's, it's, we're looking good. We're looking better than we have in terms of uh, forming this bottom. Um, but it doesn't look like we've had enough of a breakout move, especially when you consider like the volatility index, um, you know, as low as it is, See, it's, it's hard for the, the VIX to really drop sharply when the VIX is already so low, right? It's not like if it were coming down from big levels, then that would make it a lot easier for the VIX to come down. But with the VIX really, really, uh, with the VIX really low, it makes the VIX really small ranges. And that's the, you know, when you're looking at, um, you know, what would constitute an environment where the VIX could jump really sharply, it's when you have very, very small ranges. Uh, especially over like a longer time frame, like you can see over this weekly chart, pretty much over this entire month. Um, if I were to go to like a monthly ATR here, you know, the monthly ATR is 13 points. Uh, we had 11 point range last month. We're at six point range. So we're almost at a range that's about half of what we saw um, or compared to the average right now. And, and as, as you saw at the week, you know, our, our range this week is two and a half points which is also below half of the current weekly ATR. So, you know, and the reason why is because you have the VIX, which is really, really low. The VIX uh, is range is also about half of what its average range is. And its average range is pretty low. Um, and, you know, other times it got this to these levels, it bounced up with bigger ranges, right? Which means bigger moves to the upside. And when the VIX, VIX moves up, the VIX usually moves up too. So that's something to keep an eye on uh, over the next little bit, um, you know, but by getting a higher high, closing above yesterday's high, if we can hold that and hold the breakout above this high point over here, uh, that would be a very, very good sign. So we're, you know, if we're long term bulls, like most of us are, that's kind of what we need to see over the next couple of days before we get into the weekend. Hold these bullish breaks, right? These bullish moves, solidify them. Uh, going into next week and you can see that on this chart, you know, keep the green shading going into next week We got two days worth of green shading pretty much across the board We need to keep it right if we if we were to roll over and get back below the moving average on any of these 
and now we're down to two green arrows, especially if the stochastics rolls over on a couple of these, then then they'll be gone. And that's that's not bullish, right? Bullish is when is when you have those green shadings, um, you know, last for a while, right? For more days than just a couple of days. So we had a couple of days there and we broke and finally got up and we're kind of flirting the MACD. By the time by the time we got the three green arrows again, the MACD histogram was dropping already. We don't need to see that. We need to see three green arrows and a green line, right, to really solidify. We never did get the green line over here and we still don't have the green line now. So really important that we keep that histogram rising, we turn that moving average up, we keep the green shading going in the next week and and they keep that volatility down. But you know, there's it's not it's not going to be easy because volatility is already pretty darn low. Um, um, it's the lowest that's the lowest close that we've had on volatility since that April level uh, since we rallied in April. So it's already pretty low. In fact, uh, we are below. If you look at the VIX here on this chart, we are below that 200 day moving average. Uh, we haven't done that since April. So you know, if we if last time we got below it, we just went right back above it. So we'll see if we, that ends up being the case again, especially considering how low the BVIX is and how low, how small the ranges are, again, by the end of the week especially. So what do you think? Do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? Uh, let me know in the comment section below, especially if you disagree. What charts or indicators are you looking at that suggest why you're either a lot more bullish than I am or a lot more bearish than I am? All right, now let's take a look at what's driving the price action today. And here's the, the comparison chart for the different asset classes. And it was pretty much risk on, right? Your two biggest uh, risk, uh, US equity, it was two biggest risk at classes within the US equity spectrum. Um, Q's and IWM up here, both up one and a half percent. S&P dragged down, um, uh, down to 0.5%, which is pretty uncommon considering how bullish the, the Q's were. Remember the, um, We'll, we'll look at the sector comparison in just a minute, um, but that's you know when you have XOK and XLY and XLC making up most of the Qs uh, and most of the S and P, that's what really brings that up. Uh, you can see the dollar was really bullish again; it's been re relatively weak lately, and that put a lot of pressure on gold uh, today. So let's take a look at some of those uh, different asset classes, especially gold here. Look at that drop in gold. Look at it, it's pretty much going parabolic. Uh, to the downside, very, very significantly bearish. Um, now it's trying to get into convergence mode, it's trying to find the low point here, um, but you can see it tried to do, th do that over here too and it continued down before finally finding it that low. But when you look at the DMI uh, for gold, you know, this is pretty bullish, uh, pretty uh, bearish. Here's the weekly version of it. Um, the negative index higher than it's been since way over here. Uh, since uh, going into the fourth quarter of 2018 uh, when we started that bear market um, that, you know, again, we didn't fully realize the impact of because of uh, these large cap mega cap names that kept the uh, U.S. equity market afloat. That's a pretty decent move to the downside, though. Again, that's a bigger daily ADX than we've seen all year uh, to the upside or for our bearish uh, move. If you take a look at where we are relative to uh, these moving averages, um, you know we are well below the 200-day moving average. We haven't been this far below here. Let me change this to uh, the 200-day simple moving average. We haven't been this far below the 200-day moving average for a while. Right over here, we were in 2021 uh, when we had gone parabolic uh, on uh, IWM into that March peak that mid-March peak there. So gold uh, declined during that uh, move. And then of course over here again in 2018 going into that fourth quarter uh, decline. And you can see the end of 2016 coming out of the elections. Uh, we were pretty, we got down about 10% below. So to be 8% below the 200 day moving average is pretty significant uh, for gold. Here's bonds. Uh, bonds had been also been significantly below more than any other time for TLT. Um, below its 200-day moving average, but bonds are in convergence mode, right? The MACD is trying to get here. Let's get back to the 817, 817 exponential. There we go. Uh, we are in like the MACD is above its moving average. We're not above the 17-day yet, which would also be the point of control of the last five years. 
Uh, so we're not like really taking off to the upside, but we're also not declining anymore either, at least not nearly at the same pace. So we are in convergence mode on TLT. We're not quite on gold um, on a long-term basis. We are well below the moving average um, and we are headed towards that 200 week. Uh, and you can see we're actually kind of breaking this 38% retracement level last couple of weeks uh, into an area where there's just no volume. Uh, of course, that, a big reason for that is what's going on with the US dollar, right? The Euro, um, the dollar being pretty bullish. Again, this is a weekly chart, so we did have a hammer pattern last week or somewhat of an engulfing pattern, even with uh, today's rally in the dollar, decline in the Euro, we're still at an engulfing pattern uh, for this week. And you can see the MACD is below its moving average, um, but we're kind of starting to, you know, with these higher lows, uh, as well as on the RSI and the CCI. Not to a weekly chart here. And you can see the higher lows developing there too. So we are forming a divergent low point here um, uh, at some point, especially right around parity. Uh, so, you know, and, and that 78% retracement, that big long term move that I've shown you before, we're going all the way back to 2000. Right, this big rally we had, we're sitting right on that 78% retracement level. Um, you know, so we are setting ourselves up for a low point. Now, it doesn't happen in the day and it doesn't happen in the week, um, but you know, the, it appears the strength in the dollar uh, might be peaking. Now, the problem is, as I showed you on Monday, a strong dollar, even, you know, you know it's, it's going to be to get back up to even just like, you know, the midpoint of the last 20 years to get up, like say to get up to 130, which is about the midpoint of this range. If I were to do a linear regression here, there we go. So if I were to get up to, you know, it looks like about even 125 appears to be uh, the midpoint of the last 20 years. If I were to go, uh, it's maybe just to 2000 and uh, 2002, so get rid of some of that. Uh, you can see probably about 120 is more of a, a range. So you know, if, even if I were to get up to this 120 to 125 area, um, until we get up to that point, then anywhere down here between parity and 110 is a pretty strong dollar. And, you know, that that doesn't portend very well for economic outlook, right? It, it pretty much causes global slowdown in 15 and 16. Again, we didn't really feel the effects of because these mega cap names were acting as some pretty decent safe havens. And you can see throughout most of uh, 2018, we, you know, we are still at the stronger dollar phase. And again, you know, for most of that year, from, from fourth quarter 2018 through COVID, we were in a bear market that we didn't really feel the effects of because of you know, these large cap, mega cap names. But I have small cap stocks suffered, international stocks suffered, commodities really suffered, bonds and gold rallied sharply to the upside. I mean, everything else except QQQ, uh, which helped S&P 500 and, and other U.S. equities stay relatively bullish all the way through to that COVID low point and then the bounce. But even see that bounce only got you to 123. So it pretty much got you to about the midpoint. So kind of a neutral rate for the dollar versus the euro. And like I said, now we're very, very bullish, uh, very strong dollar. Again, from an economic growth standpoint, um, having a strong dollar because it's over the last time we were down here, it took, what, a couple of years to get just back to the midpoint. So it's not going to get back up to 120 next week or next month. So I don't think that gets enough play in terms of what a strong dollar will do in this area uh, for economic growth or prospects going forward. Like, you know, we, we hadn't seen that coming off of the COVID low. And every time we got to these levels, like when we got down here, we had QE1. When we got down here, we had QE2. When we got down here, we had QE3. When we got down to eventually here, um, we started raising interest rates, uh, but the Fed kept the balance sheet. You know, the balance sheet was still growing until the end of 2018, when they, or um, the end of 2017, excuse me. They started to let the balance sheet uh, start to taper off a little bit, and you saw what happened there. So then when we got down here, it was the biggest bomb of fiscal and monetary accommodation that we've seen um you know that surpassed the great financial crisis coming off the COVID low point 
So now we are actually stronger dollar than any of those other periods. And not only are we not producing QE uh, and not producing any fiscal accommodation. Remember, we had the fiscal accommodation in 16 um, because of the uh, ta the new the new uh, administration. Uh, their policies were very pro-business friendly, very accommodative from a fiscal standpoint. Um, so we even had that. We don't have that right now. In fact, you could argue we're kind of getting more restrictive from a fiscal standpoint, obviously getting more restrictive from a monetary standpoint with inflation levels as high as they are. Um, imagine what inflation levels would be if the dollar wasn't so bullish um, and commodities. Imagine what commodities and crude oil would be if the dollar wasn't so bullish, if the euro wasn't so bearish, if the yen wasn't so bearish. The crude oil would be through the roof. I mean, it would easily probably be 150 bucks um, if euro and the yen weren't so bearish um, pushing the dollar up and keeping you know keeping commodity prices from rising up so dramatically even more than what they you know the sharp moves that we've already seen so imagine that now we'll feel the effects of the strong dollar from an economic growth standpoint especially with a lot of these multinational companies that's not getting talked about it is getting talked about in a lot of the quarterly reports um, that you're hearing that are coming off you're seeing more and more companies talking about what this dollar will do. It's great for you if you're a tourist, or I don't know if you want to go to Europe right now, but it's, for, as a tourist, it's great to go to Europe right now from an exchange standpoint, not from an energy standpoint, but from an exchange standpoint, but it's not good to do business over there, right? It's really, really bad, and that's going to impact things as we saw every other time. Every other time, uh, it was benefited um, from... Um, from accommodation. We're not getting accommodation. In fact, not only are we not getting accommodation, we're actually getting restriction instead. All right, let's take a quick look at how the sectors perform today. Let's come over here and take a look at um, July the 20th. So XLK, XLY, XLC uh, really rallied everything else cyclical, not so much. Industrials did okay, energy did okay, but materials, financials, lagging, that's what helped bring the S&P down. And then your safety sectors, not only did they lag, they dropped, right? I mean, that's not really, that's, I mean, this is risk on, but that's not really like broad based risk appetite because usually in risk appetite, you know, these will go up too, they just won't go up as much. But the fact that they drop so much is um, not necessarily the best, the most risk, uh, it's not the, the best sign of risk appetite either. Um, you can see down here at the bottom, um, you know, we're healthcare and staples are trying to get going, but we still have, you know, we, we don't have dark green shading and a green line yet on any of these sectors. We're getting close on XLK, we're getting closer um, uh, on XLY, but we're not there yet on anything else. And we still have dark pink shading and a red line on, on materials, on energy, uh, which are kind of economic growth sensitive areas, but barely above the moving average in industrials and financials. And then you can see utilities, you know, everything else down here, safe haven areas, they're not doing very well either. Okay, yeah, the chip stocks have been in the news quite a bit lately. So for our trade idea of the day, I wanted to take a look at applied material, um, advanced, not applied materials, advanced uh, micro devices, AMD. Uh, it's intermediate line just barely crossed above its market sentiment. Um, the uh, you can see here the um, you know we're what six and, over six and a half percent up above uh, the moving average. So you know it's a pretty good uh, bullish move. Light green shading and yellow line, however, so we're not you know turning that moving average around at all. Um, we're not turning that moving average around enough at least. But at least you got the near term line up. So you. You know we're not bearish anymore even if we're not necessarily like breaking out you can see you know we're still well below the cloud just barely getting above the blue line we don't have a bullish trend anymore but we don't have a bear a bearish trend anymore but we don't have a bullish one either uh, when you look at the bollinger bands we're not breaking out yet of uh, that band but we have a big chunk of volume up above us uh, that's the that's the concern uh, you're also sitting right at that 50-day moving average again big chunk of volume here the MACD histogram is about as high as it's been so it, you know it, it it may be very close to peaking with the MACD really low right so kind of like this where it peaked it, it made a run strong run up to the 50 
but wasn't able to you know maintain because um, it made such a strong run to get there. Very similar to what we or what we're getting right now. Uh, if you take a look at uh, this chart again, everything looks great. You know, dark green shading, PPO is really low. Uh, very, that's a pretty strong uh, candle. This is about as big as we've seen so far in this bearish trend uh, from a weekly standpoint. Um, let's see. I want to look at this one too. The RSI and the CCI again at 60 and at 200, kind of like you know what we saw with like the I believe it was Russell 2000, um, but we're not breaking through there, and so. You know, again, it's a very important inflection point. If a rally, if we continue to rally towards 100, we got a lot of volume that will make it more gradual. This has been a great move to get here, but now we're going to run into a lot more resistance. Right? If we move to the downside, it's unlikely that we're going to have a big move lower either um, because you can see we're kind of in a, a, a convergence mode. We're well above the 30-day moving average. The 8 and 17 are moving up in that direction. And we are, the MACD is about to cross up above its moving average. Uh, so at the very worst, we're going to be in bullish con or bearish convergence mode, which will limit any downside moves. Uh, of course, if we break the 200 week, it's a different story, but it appears that we've gotten to the 200 week and we might just be kind of grinding up on some kind of bounce up towards the 30 week here. Uh, so if that being the case, you know, if we don't have a good bullish move or bearish move going on, then what we decided to do is do a um, iron condor spread. Give us a little bit more room to the downside. Uh, so selling the 78, buying the 73, uh, but coming up to the 26 delta on the call side, selling the 100 and buying the 105. So that's the trade right there, going for a normal risk. Get rid of this one here. Going for a normal risk there, getting a pretty decent return. And if you notice where my break evens are, you know, when I put them on, let's see this on the daily chart here. You can see when my upper break even is where the biggest chunk of volume is. So you got lots of touches along here. And my lower break even is back down to these lows where it's unlikely that we'll like break sharply down again like we did last time to get to that point. It'll be more gradual, more up and down. Uh, so I like where those break evens are. Uh, so that's our trade idea for today. All right, well, that does it for today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link that's popping out in the top right corner of your screen that takes you to our Market Outlook forums. Open up any new thread there with any questions or comments you have about the video today. Reply to anybody else's threads, and let's keep this conversation going in between videos. As always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that thumbs up icon, comment on the video, like us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Join our website at marketscholars.com for free. As I said, with that link I showed you earlier, have a great rest of your Wednesday night, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.